<sighs> so, hey, it's me again, um, Kyle Hudson. Uh, this is all new to me. Uh, Patreon and videos and video editing and uh, what, what this is all about. Um, but I wanted a format to talk about existentialism and existentialist ideas, um, how they're attached to choice, uh, free will, um, critical thinking, um, and, you know, like putting them on YouTube and doing a Patreon thing in case anybody wants to help me do it. And if they don't, that's fine too. Um, so where do we start off? Um, obviously I'm going to try to make these videos short for now. If you guys want longer ones, like entire 50 minute lectures, that's, that's up to you. And I can do those. Obviously I taught those, but, um, the majority of people don't know what existentialism is. Uh, they think of, um, either black berate poets from the forties, uh, or nihilists. And, and neither one of those things really represents existentialism, um, at all. Um, existentialism, if summed up in one sentence, is the idea that existence precedes essence, which basically means instead of like a hammer or a chair or a guitar or anything else that exists, where you can have the idea of it beforehand because its purpose is to sit on or its purpose is known before it exists, its purpose is to, is to hammer nails, its purpose is to play music philosophical personhood, people, um, beings that are self-aware have an essence that's determined by their choices. So their essence doesn't come until after they exist. They exist first and their essence isn't, you don't know their essence until they make their choices because their essence is determined by those choices. A hammer can't make choices. A guitar can't make choices. A chair can't make choices. So uh, freedom and free will uh, cosmological free will, and we'll talk about that later, the fact that, that the entire universe is free is the reason why philosophical persons are free. Um, if there were three foundational um, tenets or ideas of existentialism, if there was, you know, if existentialism was a stool, its three legs would be freedom, responsibility, and authenticity. Um, so freedom and choice of philosophical persons, choice, um, free will, uh, to make a moral choice, uh, to make a decision, um, regardless of any other influence. And we'll talk about those things that influence our choices, but don't cause us to make choices at all. Um, the fact that human existence precedes our essence, because we get to decide what our essence is. That's what existential is existentialism is essentially um, the idea as opposed to uh, the foundational um, philosophical movement in the West and Greece um, who would say that we're no different um, we're just we're, we're divine hammers but we still have a purpose as determined by God or some sort of demiurge uh, the existentialists said no that's that's nonsense we I decide um, who I am so that's a, that's a huge, a huge, 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 huge difference between existentialism and really all the other types of Western philosophy over the past 2,600 years. Um, the second part, um, responsibility, and I won't get to authenticity today, and I'll go into deeper detail over tons of videos later. The, the one thing I wanted to say about responsibility today is um, existentialists would also say that um, whether there are positive or negative consequences of choices, if it's your choice, even if it's a passive choice, and I'll get into passive choices in another, another, uh, another video, passive choices are, you know, I'm, I don't have any ice cream in front of re me right now, but because I could get ice cream and I have the ability to get ice cream, it's my choice that I'm not eating ice cream right now. There's because I could have it, you know, I'm just because it's not active. doesn't mean it's still not my responsibility that I don't have ice cream in front of me. Um, we're responsible for our active and passive choices and the consequences, good and bad. And, um, it seems like in today's society, 
um, existential responsibility almost doesn't exist. It's been destroyed by the baby boomers, by and large, more than anyone uh, over the past 40 years. Everything is a disease. Um, it's not my fault. Uh, I'm a sex addict, so it may, it's okay that I cheated on my spouse with 84 people. Um, it's okay that I drink a gallon of beer a night because I have a disease. It's not, it's not my fault. Um, that, that complete lack of existential responsibility, um, it dehumanizes people um, and allows people to dehumanize themselves. Whether they think it's a good thing or not, it's really it's pretty terrifying. Um, the thing that recently came over the past 24 hours um, um, for YouTubers and people on Patreon, the Logan Paul um, incident. Um, um, strictly speaking, um, and I don't, I don't mince words, I think uh, the Paul brothers are human garbage. Um, and and I, I base people, um, the value of people on, on their behavior. Period. And that's the only thing you should base people on because humans have uh, free will and they can make moral choice and we are determined by our choices. Um, and the choice of Logan Paul um, to denigrate and defile uh, another human being and then to not take any real responsibility for the gravity of what he did um, is uh, pretty disgusting. Uh, I think so, I think it's also frighteningly coincidental, terrifyingly coincidental that he just happens to go to Japan with his crew and friends, and they happen to go to this forest, and there happens to be a body for them to film. Um, the implication being is someone as narcissistic and and possibly. Um, arguably NPD, maybe even antisocial personality disorder, uh, uh, beyond setting up someone's death so he could film it. I'm not saying he did that. I'm saying it's really, the coincidence is pretty ridiculous for someone who will literally seem to do anything uh, for, for clicks. Um, so uh, bringing it back to existentialism um, and responsibility. Um, don't be like the Paul brothers, you know, take not only responsibility for your passive, but also active choices and, uh, you know, <laughs> make choices that benefit other people, um, instead of hurting them, um, tr and treat other people like other people as opposed to objects. Um, uh, I think in the days and weeks to come, we're going to see some pretty, maybe even legal fallout. Um, um, I, I hope eventually, you know, like these, these kids are held to account because the frightening thing is it's a, a, a downward spiral of parents who taught those two boys no existential responsibility. Um, probably never, never, you know, never punished them for anything, never told them the word no. So why would they think that, you know, they can do whatever they want to who, whatever they want because there aren't any other who's, there's just what's. There's me and then everything else is a thing. Um, so that's, and we'll get into the, 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 the negative side to not being existentially responsible. Um, uh, in other videos, um, and it's attachment to psychology, and and uh, and if you don't look at other people as people, um, how how frightening that is. But you know, uh, thanks for listening, and you know, um, yeah, just remember, uh, everybody else is just like you today. You know, be responsible, treat them like you want to be treated, um, create who you are by your choices, and uh, I'll uh, I'll see you next month.